YouTube, what the crap's going on? Air of Carthage here. And uh, I probably didn't mention this in the other couple of videos that you may have seen before this this week, but I am out of town, um, out doing some work on a project in Texas, and I will be back uh, the next week. But uh, obviously I'm getting some content out to you, albeit at probably a reduced rate, um, because that's about the best that I had time to do before I left. <laughs> which ironically is now, so I'm speaking from the future about the future in the past. How's that for time travel? So, anyway, let's uh, jump back into where we were in the East Rome campaign. And it uh, looks like the Sassanids, eh, they got away with some troops here, probably way more than they should have. And it looks like they did some recruiting on that turn end also and got some brand new units back in. Um, again, probably way more than they could have or should have, but... They got it, or maybe they didn't. Maybe that was a different army from somewhere else. I don't really remember, and it doesn't matter. We're going to give them a butt kicking anyway. And that's all there is to it. Pretty simple. So I got this army. No, that's an agent. This army. This army can start moving in this direction. Let's take a look at the overhead map real quick, and let's just just want to see my armies, just to make sure I've got everybody where I want them. So we've got one in Magna Graecia, another in Venetia, we've got one here in Pannonia, Dardania, Thracia, Egypt, and we got our two to keep the east pacified and protected. So that's going to be where our armies are at at the moment. So I'm trying to think whether we could swing this one into Italy. I think we'll just swing it north. Maybe if I send one kind of along this path, one straight through this way and another straight up this way, we can kind of cut off all of the uh, Germanic settlements and everything. We need to send this one through North Africa as well. So that should work. Uh, the interest that I'm earning is actually going up rather rapidly and I might spend a couple of turns continuing to save money so that basically the interest that I have can finance my empire in and of itself. It wouldn't take that long to get it to that point, I don't think. I'm gonna end a turn here. See the Franks? Really? That's not the faction I would expect to see back there, but nevertheless, there they are. We will go deal with them. That means the Franks have traveled a long ways there. But that's pretty typical for factions on Attila. They don't seem to be bound by region. They like to go wherever you're at. Including everywhere. <laughs> Okay, let's see. Looks like the Sassanids are going to bring everything they have to bear against my forces. That's good. It'll just consolidate them for destruction. This time they are seriously lacking in cavalry compared to last time, though. They do have a crapload of onagers. I don't know that that'll really make any big difference for them. But yeah. Let's go ahead and fight this. Their, uh, their lack of cavalry, though, is going to hurt them pretty badly. As long as I can just deal with those uh, Svarn Cav. Uh, well, you know what? Their archers could present a danger too. They have a lot of them. Like a whole lot of them. And uh, Persian bowmen actually have really decent melee damage. So they can be a little more difficult for horsemen to dispatch quickly. Okay. Oh, I forgot about this dial on my warrior too. Let's go ahead and throw him in there. Don't want to leave him out of the party. Okay. Got 
Got everybody thrown in. We got one nice infantry line. Apparently I still haven't quite finished the research for the Comez General, which is unfortunate because it would be handy in this particular battle. I'm going to put all my melee cav on one flank and all my missile cav on another. I don't know if this is a particularly good idea, but that's what we're going to do. I failed to make you all a video of what I think of the patch, um, which I apologize for. I haven't had enough time to do so, but obviously my... I've kind of made a, a statement about it by not making a video, which is that it's not all that exciting. It's not bad things, per se, that they did in the patch, but it doesn't seem like it's anything that, that really... I mean, again, they made some changes to the game, and I'm not complaining, per se, about those changes. They just don't seem like they were kind of what we were all hoping for. It seemed like for as long as it took them to get that patch, we had kind of all expected more. Um, but more was not delivered. Okay, got some Sassanids behind me right here. This can be potential trouble. Sassanids are likely to try and attack me from pretty much every direction. Let's try and draw this cavalry into our spearmen. It is a Persian noble, so I'm going to switch to heavy shot. They have their own archer cav coming in to try and greet me. I hate that these guys don't have Parthian shot. It makes them truly worthless. turtle up here so that their archers can't have the same effect on me. I'm trying to get shots here, but you just you can't get shots to save your life with uh, horse archers that don't have Parthian shot. They're not quite as nimble as they once were on Shogun 2, unfortunately. We did lure the uh, Persian noble straight into my spearmen, though, which if, if we're to believe the patch ought to be good for me. I'm going to kind of pull out here to the flanks a little bit. Actually, let's pull this horse archer cav around in here. It looks like these cav are targeting it. So I'm just going to keep my guys steady here. If all their cavalry comes headlong into all my defensive formations, it ought to be quite good for me. And it looks like that's exactly what's happening. So once we get rid of their cav, I'll kind of own the mobility on the battlefield, like right here. So we're going to try and take, take advantage of that. Come on, please get some heavy shot off right here. I'm gonna switch on precision too. Dad gummit. I got a couple of shots, but we're gonna have to keep pulling away, and before I forget, I gotta get over here. Let's push these archers. Let's split up. That way we can shoot him while fleeing. Okay, getting chased by a Lockman scout over here, that's definitely not good either. And I'm trying to keep keep tabs on multiple spots on the battlefield, and I'm probably going to fail. Okay, we have broken... Well, we should have already broken enemy archers back here, but again, like I said, the Persian bowmen... Crap, and then I just got rear charged there, that's... We just finished off that archer though, so let's come over here and see if we can... We might actually lose that fight. Crap, dang it. Filthy Lockman scout over here got me. Just gonna flee away again here. I'm gonna try and use some heavy shot to... Okay, there we go. Made a breakthrough over here. That archer unit came back from routing. Which is pretty typical again for Attila. We can go after the Persian noble there. Okay. Yes, please come here. Okay, that Onager should be dead. 
Those archers are faced the other direction, so let's just go for the other Onager. Okay, spears are going to intercept here. Okay, doing alright up front. This flank is probably going to get overwhelmed, but we can, uh, we can pull around and help out. Let's go get rid of that archer again. These units aren't needed over here, so let's start pulling them this way. Get in there and help against the Lockman Scout. Okay, the Persian nobles are out of the fight. My infantry up front will do pretty darn well against assassinate infantry. Almost without question. Kill those bowmen. The only way I can kill all these bowmen is just by having a giant mob of pretty decent cavalry, because like I said, the Sassanid bowmen are quite a bit sturdier in melee than your typical barbarian bowmen. Not enough that we really talk about it much, because it doesn't seem to make a big difference in multiplayer, but it actually does make a pretty big difference in the campaign. I'm going to try and go after this big ball of skirmishers back here. Looks like this unit here got destroyed by archers or something. I'm going to try and spread out so I can maximize the charge pain from all these different cavalry units and potentially get surrounding going on here. Just send my general, we'll send those guys in. Let's do some rear charges here with this horse archer. It won't be much, but it could be enough to help end this fight. Just from the impact damage and the morale penalty. It's already got one of the units of Pagan Band wavering. Okay, all these units are fleeing from me, which is fine. I'm gonna go ahead and take the time to catch them. Now they've dispatched a spear unit out here after me, but it looks like it's pulling back. Two more Onager crews coming in from the back of the battlefield. We can now pull away from this mess. It looks like a lot of the Sassanid infantry is is uh, going bye-bye. See if we can silence these bowmen. Probably won't be enough, but let's just go ahead and get started. Get away from the spearmen, please. Really? I lost a Persian mounted warrior over here somewhere to the archers, I think. That's a Savarin cav, never mind. <laughs> That's why I lost my Persian mounted warrior. I'm gonna go put an end to this Onager bullcrap over here. Otherwise, my infantry is quite capable of uh, finishing this fight. I am getting rear shot over here, but I don't think those archers have enough volleys left to cause any substantial damage. Those Svarn Cav might actually defeat me in melee. They're a medium cav unit. They do not... wow, they've got a lot of kills. I was totally thinking that unit was a horse archer, and that was a huge mistake on my part. I'm going to try and finish off this Onager and then I'll wheel around with my other Persian Mounted Warrior to see if we can help finish that fight with Svarin Cav. Svarin Cav is not crazy strong in melee, but it's strong enough to potentially cause issues. The men have thrown down their weapons and are fleeing. Sure enough, and it did beat me in melee. Without any three losses, really. They don't even have a bonus versus Cav. Give me a break. Come here, you Svarn pieces of crap. Let's see if I can try and finish them. The enemy does have some missile troops left, but again, none of them look like they're going to be able to sway the battle substantially. Eh, looks like the enemy trying to pull back with some of their troops here. Get some of my troops here initially in Testudo and start... Start pushing up over here. Ooh, 
This time I got a good charge on the mercenary Svar and Cav, and they look to be dying in droves. So that's good. They didn't have any ammo left, which like I said is definitely a good thing. There we go, starting to wrap up this infantry fight. The Assassinids are going to start losing all their numbers. And that's going to cause the chain route, folks. That's going to be all she wrote. So fortunately, my guys were able to uh, <laughs> take this dusty day for, uh, for Rome, for the glory of Rome. Yeah, I've had the uh, the blood effects turned off in this battle, and I did notice that it does indeed run a lot smoother. So apparently the uh, blood hotfix um, also entailed killing the frame rates. And although the effects of the hotfix were nice compared to the original really crappy blood effects, um, I guess given the option between okay-ish blood effects and horrible frame lag, I'm just going to take the no blood effects. All right, looks like all we lost was a couple mercenary units, so I'll just take on a bunch of their warriors to bolster my numbers so we can just keep the pressure on here. Assassinates basically basically just lost all their forces, though. They'll run off and try and be a nuisance, but yeah, they're pretty much finished. close to the end of the turn end. I was hoping that's actually the last turn before my generals all get upgraded to Comez, and that would be, like I said, extremely handy because they're good infantry and skirmisher killers. Not to mention having your general be mobile is just far better. So we got Rebellion at Persis, Hostile Agent Activity, Enemy Killed in Battle, Attrition, Looks like someone's going for political gain here, but I have plenty of power to block their promotions. <laughs> Be wary of snide attacks versus your rivals. Yeah, ooh, I'm so scared. What are my rivals gonna do? Jack crap, that's what. Really? Assassin is... <laughs> how, how did these guys survive that last battle? Wouldn't they have all come out against me? Seems like a bunch of hogwash, to be honest, but it's okay, I'll just maintain the siege. They think they can win. That's fine. How about now? What if I bring down all these reinforcements? She's still going to win? Because my guess is no. That's right. I thought... Yeah, let's actually... There we go. I thought one of these guys had a mercenary onager. Son of a stupid, they don't. And now I'm inside the uh, area of influence. Let's continue the siege. Let's see if we can come up here and snag a mercenary onager here. There we go. Uh, now I've got the wrong army sieging, so I have to lift that siege, and all the while I'm taking desert attrition every time I move, I think. There we go. Let's see, they've got the missile superiority, so I'm going to auto-resolve. Go on balance, there we go. I didn't feel like fighting another big old drawn-out battle versus the Sassanids. And, uh, I'm not going to subjugate them at this point. I'm just going to occupy it so we can, what is this here, provincial instability. So there's, I get the penalty no matter what, yeah, I might as well loot it, take a little, take a little cash off of it. There we go. Send these guys back to Spahan. I'm going to keep the Onager for a turn even though 
Well, actually... Yeah, I'll keep them because the rest of my troops are a little weak. I'll get rid of them on the next turn. But that's... Uh, there's a few crappy Persian rebels over here, too, we're going to have to deal with pretty quickly. We're going to need to trash all the uh, Sassanid buildings here. And the Sassanid crap stacks have all fled. And uh, that's going to be expected, though. Yeah, they just took off everywhere. All we got to do, though, is just... Uh, they've got a couple of very basically defeated armies. Um, what kind of garrison do we get here, if any? Oh, we're one turn away from getting some better ones. But we'll see. Well, I do believe we completed the research finally. Yep, we've got the Comez General. We could go ten more turns and get Clibinari. <laughs> the Preventores are going to be worthless, to be honest. But they do help me unlock the highest tier stuff here. Cataphract, the Tagmata Cav. Crap, you gotta go all the way out here for Tagmata Cav. Oh, that Tagmata Cav would be nice, though, would it not? Trade War, Food Market, Food Emporium, Slave Maker, Wine Maker, Wheat Mills. We don't want to research this. Disables leg legacy technology, molded architecture. So what is molded? So market molded architecture allows me to build the Imperial Library and the Great Theater and the Circus, which I don't want. Disables legacy technology, natural philosophy, which takes away all that stuff too. What the heck? Why would I do that? Why do they even put these out here? These these are pointless. What? Why would you want to research these? Yeah, that doesn't make any sense. So, whatever I do, don't touch the crap down the center line here. And who cares if I never get this, I guess. So, yeah, no big deal there. Trying to think though to get all the way out here to, to Takmata Cav would take 53 turns. 37, geez, to get this done. Wow, 53 turns. Well, I don't know that I need that stuff that bad not to just go for a couple of short term gains over here, so that's what I'll do. Well, that is a considerable number of turns. Okay, let's get that uh, province situated. Let's see, Regium is still quite upset. I've got so much food and I'm not really looking to make any money off this province that I'm thinking about just going with buildings that'll make it really happy here. <laughs> can't build any kind of like forum or anything here. Yeah, we'll just go with the fountain. And we're spreading Greco-Roman paganism here too, which should help if there's any religious unrest. I've kind of got this army up here, which looks like it got agent smashed. So I lost all my movement points this turn. Yeah, we got agent baked up there. Uh, we're going to need an army to come back here and fend off the Franks. They're going to take a bunch of snow attrition on the way, but they'll be alright. I guess I could have just taken this army there, it would have made a lot more sense, but whatever. So yeah, we're still here where we can train some good troops. So let's do so. Let's get rid of these scout equites. Not going to do me any good. What all do we got here? We got uh, equites, damate, equites, promoti. Going to be pretty good. You there, get to work. Rome needs good fighters. I think we'll take one more infantry. 
I'm gonna keep the Sagittarius, so let's see what'll that give me. That'll give me a pretty good So I have six swords, four spears. Yeah, we'll go heavy on the cav here too. There we go. And we can upgrade these guys to armored Sagittari now too. Might as well. Gives them much better melee damage too. So that's kind of handy. Means they'd be a little tougher in a grind out fight. My sword is yours. Your equipment Got is some different. other factions up here to the north of us. We'll have to keep an eye on all these, all these disreputable characters that are showing up near our land. Commander. And let's go ahead and build up the... So we can already train Easter Dumber Legio here, which is good. And I might go ahead... I'm going to go ahead and just uh, do the Skirmisher range, and then I'll bring in some uh, mercenary horsemen over time, like these Camel Warriors. And I should be able to retrain all my generals to the the Comez at this point. Which will certainly be worth it. Retraining is not possible because they're in foreign territory. Ready for battle. We hunger for battle. Upgrade that guy too. So let's come back out here. Ready for orders. I actually think I will just go ahead and ditch these Onager. Yeah, there's like 2,000 upkeep. So nuts to that. I've only got 18. Can I train anything here? I can. <laughs> I can train Onager and Spears. I'm going to train one unit of Spears. I may disband it, but just to help speed up the retrain rate. I don't know, whatever, we'll upgrade those bowmen. Just in case I decide to keep them. There we go. I think we've upgraded our generals to the Comez, and the Comez apparently comes at a much higher up upkeep cost, because I can tell just from those few changes on our income. Let's see, we got a general here. Let's give him the extra replenishment. Construction. Now, there's nothing that helps helps the Roman armies against attrition, unfortunately. But we could do something like this that'll give us extra replenishment rate as well, which is not a bad not a bad thing to have. Huh? Your will is done. The sword was drawn, but now so the Abdanians want a peace treaty and now they're willing to pay me again. We'll take this for now because it'll just be a few less factions gunning for me in the West Romans. We've got quite enough factions at war with us. We'll just try and clean up the slate a little bit here. We're going to have plenty of enemy stacks who want a piece of us. The Franks thought twice of that and then left. Good decision. I'm probably going to have to leave one army in the homelands. Let the others march abroad. Just because it's going to be way too tempting of a target for all these wandering factions. Okay, so it looks like the Sassanids are going to make a desperation attack. They're besieging me? Really? Okay, here we go. Auto resolve this one, and the Sassanids are dead. Oops, sorry, bumped the microphone. That's probably a lot louder for you than it was for me.
So the Sassanids actually picked up some mercenaries and are just trying to straight up besiege me at the other settlement. But once we kill that army, I think it'll pretty much be the end of them. Looks like some of the, some of the factions in Italy are thinking twice about sticking around with my army there. And they've gone ahead and started to flee, at least for now. Looks like Big Brother's here to help West Rome. And the bullies start to scatter. Battle, military investment, disrepute, who cares? Alright, um, this guy can be upgraded. We can open up assassinations, finally. Good, that means we can try and get rid of this bloke. And of course we did not. It's alright though, we'll forgive him. Are we able to take Sermonum? It's been long enough. All right, so we'll take Ceremonium. It's a nice, uh, it's a nice location. I'm just gonna occupy it because the uh, crap from looting does so much damage. Provincial instability, conquest penalty, which I'll get one way or the other. Yeah, let's just occupy it. Tear this stuff down. Let's see, let's head over here back to the east and take care of a couple of pieces of business. One, we need to start converting over the town center, trash that building entirely that we don't need. We'll convert this one. Actually, let's tear it down. I want to build a capital in its place. I uh, don't really want that building either, to be honest. So we have rebels or Sassanids to attack. Both are a problem, though the rebels are gaining a little more strength. So part of me would like to just go ahead and deal with them first. Take on soldiers, I can replace the two spearmen quite easily. There we go. And let's see, up here, do they, do the assassins really have enough to fight me? No, they don't. They're gonna run if I attack them. So let's have them killed in battle. Okay. So the Sassanids will survive another turn. There's Sassanid separatists here that actually don't really look like they're at war with me, but they're certainly not doing me any favors. But yeah, the, the Sassanids are going to be completely handled. I wanted to check, just see as this goes up. Yeah, look, our interest income each turn is almost 4,000. Um, as I mean, it's climbing relatively quick compared, uh, you know, ev everything. Uh, taken into account here. Okay, so this army is still re or still training, so that's good. We're getting some good troops in down there. Where do we get the? Maybe maybe I just have to build. I can't remember if the east eastern armies have better skirmishers or what. Ooh, we can do this and unlock Skull Eye Palatinite. And Excubatore's Cavalry Guard, that's pretty cool. And we get a garrison of several Cav. We are definitely going to do that. If I can get seven, I might build an infantry structure here too so that we can train all the good stuff back in, in Thracia. Okay, let's see where we're at here. Is this army still locked down by agents? It is not. 
So I want to get up here and get rid of this army of the Ostrogoths. Looks like Italy or Italia is still acting friendly for the moment. That's good. Let's attack this o Ostrogothic army. I don't think they have anywhere to run. Look at that, they have some Legio Committee Tenses. They must have uh, taken a Roman province because then they can actually recruit uh, those units. They have Germanic bows, which fortunately are not Germanic archers. Uh, these guys are in for a beating. I kind of want to fight them just because I haven't gotten to fight the Ostrogoths just yet. Not because this is probably going to be some kind of great grand victory here. Did the Ostrogoths own this city? I thought it was the other faction that was in the city. Maybe the other faction was just nearby. Looks like the Ostrogoths actually own the city. Let's wait through the fog. Still fog. Still fog. Watch it be raining out. Nope. There we go. Yeah, I don't like fighting in the fog because I can't see anything and neither can you. so that we can potentially approach different angles. Oh, this is... I must have forgotten to upgrade this. No, this general was in foreign territory. That's why I couldn't upgrade him. Sucks, he's still Palatina Guard. Which is a pretty much worthless unit. Okay, over here there's pretty weak defenses. All they have is a Legio Comita Tenses. But there are archers and stuff there to complicate matters. They got a barricade put up there, it's no biggie. Yeah, we probably just need to punch through here. Where our numbers give us strength. I'm gonna go ahead and pull the uh, crossbows forward. Start seeing if I can rip into that Legio Comita Tenses. And we'll just try and overwhelm them with numbers. Let's send two armor legio here. And let's send these two this way. Put these guys on heavy shot for best effect versus infantry. Okay. Up the Palatina Guard. Yeah, I'm gonna kind of just hold off on this other flank. See if we can bust through on this side where I've got better, better chances. I'm gonna move up within javelin range. Let my armored legio throw their javelins. Got some decent shots on these. Legio Comedia Tenses. I'm gonna do a barrage real quick. Let's see if we can put down some more shots on them. Yeah, we're getting some nice kills with our crossbows. And I just got charged here. That was. Oh, the enemy's actually outflanking me. What the heck? That is probably the most bizarre thing I've ever seen. They outflanked me and did a good job of it, completely destroying this armored Legio in the process. But, I'm going to make them pay the price now. Okay, we're taking out the tower. Let's take that down. Let's get rid of this unit. Let's try and get up here and cap the tower. The enemy tower is no more than wreckage now. Oh, we have to go around to get to the tower? Apparently. Let's get the Equites Promoti through there. Can I move on forward? We got rid of the, we're getting rid of their barricade. It's almost gone. Then we'll bust through. Let's go ahead and uh, start running these guys in. Let's 
bring our cav. How is this? The you know, committed tensei is holding out against all this overwhelming force. That's what I thought. Take out the Germanic bows. Take out the skirmishers. Up here and cap the tower. You all don't pull through them actually. Let's go there. Let's just come on through with our cataphractari. And we'll pin in all these archers. We'll make sure they get pinned in by putting one here. I guess there is no good way to get around that. Got their archers over there. Cataphractari. I didn't actually get a good charge, which really sucks. But they are just Germanic bows, so it's not like they'll actually do well. Try and get all my guys in here for the quickest capture. Let's actually bring this armored legio into the back of those bows. Just want to finish tearing up those bows. There is a Germanic noble up here. That's their only remaining unit. It's about to get taken on by three armored legio, which. The enemy's tower has been destroyed! Yes, it has. Alright, both towers are down. Okay. Okay, I'm gonna bunch up on this Germanic noble and uh, try and take it down. Watch my guys collide with the Ostrogothic line here. Should be a lot of fun. <laughs> There we go. Man, I do hate all the uh, the lag from the, the blood effects, but I kind of miss some of the cooler stuff, but whatever. This works out all right. Some of these troops are not all that dissimilar looking to each other in color, and especially because of the uh, kind of dried out color palette that they're using here. I'm just kind of curious. Let's turn it back on real quick. Custom blood effects. There we go. Back. Resume battle. I wonder if it has to wait until the battle's over. Nope, there. We already got blood and decapitation going on. Let's see if it starts to slow stuff down. I mean, it is nice to have the blood effects. It kind of adds, like, that little bit of carnage to it. I mean, you don't want it to be completely insane. Like, I don't want to see people's intestines spilling all over the place, but. A little bit of that carnage feel to it is nice. Just really felt like it was giving me some intense lag in the uh, larger battles, and it probably was. Yeah, this Germanic Nobles is losing pretty badly, uh, though they're not going to get beat down real quick. Armored Legio don't have particularly high attack. They have solid damage and everything, it's just not real high uh, attack. I've never really understood the Roman infantry in this game uh, as far as their attack stats, damage. Uh, their armor and health, I understand, because they're trying to represent the, the Romans would have been probably well-trained, well-armored, equipped, all that kind of stuff. Um, but uh, yeah, I've never understood why that means uh, that therefore they must have crappy attack or javelins that don't really stand apart from anybody else. Uh, even though, I mean, the, the plumbata would have been a very interesting tool in battle. I mean, they animated it in, but they can only carry two of them, and like the guys can also carry two of the giant javelins. Like, wouldn't it make more sense maybe if the Roman troops carried like four plumbata, or certain legionaries did? I mean, it'd be it legionaries did. It'd be kind of neat in that respect, I think. Anyway, we took out the uh, the Ostrogoths at Verona. That is actually a nomadic faction, and that's what I missed. And the Ostrogoths actually did control uh, Verona, but they don't anymore. So I'm going to take control of Verona. Am I actually losing income by taking control of settlements? 
The Ostrogoths are destroyed, actually, which is quite, quite good. I wonder why it didn't give me the option to subjugate them. That's kind of odd. So, whatever the case is, we've gotten rid of the, uh, the Ostrogothic faction, Heir of Carthage, signing off for now.